Hey guys, welcome to the second part of 4.5 with using use of with uh, definite integrals. So, <clears throat> next last page of this worksheet, we have sine cube of x cosine. We're taking the integral from zero to pi over six. <clears throat> so, what do we need to do? We need to let u equal sine. Let u equal sine. So that when you take the derivative, you have cosine du is equal to cosine x dx. And guess what? I have cosine x dx, which means that I can replace it with du. The whole point of u sub is to replace everything in terms of u, so it's this is du. This takes care of the yellow. <coughs> what is u? u is sine and u is being raised to the third. Sine is being raised to the third, so there it is. Now this becomes a very, very simple u sub problem. Let me go ahead and apply my my um, my limits of integration into my u so that I get my new limits of integration with respect to u. So <coughs> u of pi over 6, what is the sine of pi over 6? <coughs> That is one half. U of zero. Sine of zero, we know is just zero. So that means my limit of integration is zero to the one half. Zero to one half. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and uh, use our <coughs> our integration rules here. So u to the fourth, and this becomes this really isn't a trick problem anymore. So it just u to the fourth over four from zero to one half. So that is one fourth u to the fourth from zero to a half. And then we just apply our limits of integration. One fourth u to the half. So it's going to be one half to the fourth minus zero to the fourth. Well, we know that's going to be zero. So this really just becomes one fourth. A uh, one half to the fourth is one over sixteen, which is one over sixty-four. <clears throat> there it is. There is my area under the curve. Find the area bounded by the graph of x times square root of x squared plus one and the x-axis. So and the x-axis <clears throat> from zero to two from 0 to where I think 2 is. I'm just going to guess it. Here's 2. And I want to find the area from here to there, including this part that I can't highlight very well. There is my area. So what do we need to do? Let's write it as an integral. 0 to 2, x, x squared plus 1, dx. This is a u sub problem let u equal x squared plus 1 du dx is 2x du over 2 is x dx. That takes care of this x dx part. So rewriting the integral 1 half du of u and what is u? u is x squared plus 1 and it's being raised to the 1 half power because it's square root and let's go ahead and apply our limits of integration. If I plug in 2 into u it's a 5. If I plug in 0 into u it's a 1 so it's really from 1 to 5. Now this becomes a very simple integration problem so it's 1 half u raised to the 3 halves but if I flip it to the front, it's two thirds from one to five. Twos cancel, you get one third u to the three halves from one to five. So let's go ahead and apply the limits of integration using FTC. So it's going to be five to the two thirds. Um, yeah, five to the two thirds minus 1 to the 3 halves. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm saying 2 thirds is 3 halves. And 5 to the 2 thirds. Well, what is 5 cubed? Well, 
I don't know what that is, and I don't have a calculator, but I'm just going to rewrite it in its exact form. So it's going to be 5 to the third is 125, so it's the square root of 125 minus 1, and that is my area here. So that is the area. This You may have to get a calculator so you can find out more or less what the area is in decimal. Last example. Water is being pumped into a tank at a rate of, at a rate given by RT. So RT represents a rate, a rate, and what is rate in calculus? Rate is a derivative. So let's just call it dr dt. That is a derivative. A table of values of RT is given. So here's a table. Letter A, use the data from the table and four subintervals to find the left Riemann sum to approximate the integral from 0 to 20 of RT. So here's 0, here's 20, and we want to separate this into four into four subintervals. And it seems like you have no choice but to use every section of this interval. Here's one rectangle, here's another rectangle, another rectangle and your fourth rectangle. Okay, so these are all your rectangles here. So let's go ahead and use left Riemann sum. If you remember your left Riemann sum, we take the left points and we use base times height from here. So let's go ahead and approximate the area under the curve. We don't know what the curve is. It's approximated. What is the base of the first rectangle? The base of the first rectangle is 5 times the height. We're using left Riemann sum, so we start from the first, 14. The base of the second rectangle is 4 times the second height is 18. Base of the third rectangle, 6 times 20 plus the base of the last rectangle which is 5 times 27 okay so and then I don't have a calculator but let me go ahead and do my very best to do this uh, 15 times 4 is 70 4 times 18 is 32 72 Um, 6 times 20 is 120, 5 times 27 is 35, 135, 135, and then this become 142, this become 155, so my total answer is 792, 297, 297, we have to, we, since we're dealing with units here, when you integrate, when you integrate a rate, when you integrate a rate you pretty much just lose the denominator because the over time is what is what classifies it as a derivative a change you lose the denominator if it was minutes squared then it'd just be minutes if it was minutes cubed it'd be minutes squared but here it's minutes and getting rid of a minutes is just gallons so it's 297 gallons okay that is when you're integrating a rate, you lose the rate. Um, use the data from the table. Okay, we're doing right Riemann sum now. So right Riemann sum is no longer the first point. It's going to be the last point. So in blue, we're doing the last points. So it's going to be the same basis, really, just different heights. And we're going to compare the areas. It's going to be 5 times 18 plus 4 times 20 plus 6 times 27 plus 5 times 32. Again, I don't have a calculator, but I'm going to try my best. 5 times 18 is 90. 80. 6 times 7 is 42. 6 times 20 is 120. 167 plus... 
160. Okay, 90 and 80 is 170. 167 and yeah, that is going to be 327. So your final answer is going to be 794. That does not look right. Anyways, I'll leave you guys with the computations. This is what I got without a calculator. This is gallons. So maybe it's right, maybe it's not. Maybe the true area is in between 297 and 497. I'll leave you guys with that. But that is how you do the right Riemann sum. In other words, we were already approximating. When we're doing Riemann sums, we were actually finding area under the curve. We were actually finding the integrals, but an estimation of the integral.